Cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're going to kick off now and we can just have more people join as it goes. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Wolfgang Webinars. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today, we're going to talk about mastering B2B marketing uh, with LinkedIn ads. Uh, my name is Mikey and I'm a client lead at Wolfgang Digital. I'm joined by my colleague, Sai, um, who's a paid social exec here at Wolfgang. Um, and we're delighted to be joined by Aditi um, from LinkedIn, who's uh, going to give you a bit of an overview of LinkedIn um, as a platform. Um, cool. Oh, is this working? Um, Oh, there we go. Uh, cool. Just before we get started, um, the data shared in this deck is confidential. So if you could uh, not share it outside of the deck, that would be great. Um, cool. Just to give you an overview of kind of what we're going to be discussing today. So we're going to give you an intro into LinkedIn's advertising platform. Uh, we're going to then kind of go through how to put together a winning B2B strategy on LinkedIn. Um, and then finally, Sai is going to take you through um, a Wolfgang case study to show you uh, LinkedIn's B2B ad strategy in action. And I'm going to pass you over to Aditi. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. My name is Aditi, and I'm part of the LinkedIn Marketing Solutions team based here on uh, based here in Dublin. Uh, so just um, grow your business with LinkedIn everywhere. And I just want to take you through understanding how audiences uh, are on LinkedIn and what is the best way to, um, you know, think about building that strategy and think about, uh, you know, building that collective co uh, confidence on the platform. Uh, so if you move to the next slide, please, Mikey. So B2B marketeers, I'm sure all of you know, are extremely, are very, very different than B2C marketeers. Half the global economy is made up of businesses that sell to other businesses. And B2B marketing is hard and it's also very, very different. What makes it different can mostly be drawn back to, I think, one simple fact, which is that in B2B marketing, it's all about moving a group of people in a certain direction rather than the individuals. And with time, what we've seen is that, uh, you know, uh, both the time that it takes to move this group and the size of this group are expanding. And, you know, in in, in simple terms, we call that the buying committee. Um, buying committees have rules, they have structures, but this buying group that we are trying to identify to sort of nail our target, target audiences on the platform is, is large, it's messy, but it can have multiple influences. Uh, B2B marketing is different and challenging in a way is also that the sales cycles are very, very long. So you have to be continuously in front of your audiences to have that top of mind recall. And revenue and attribution is also a really big part of it. And on that, from that standpoint, LinkedIn is investing a lot in its um, measurement and attribution tools so that we are able to bring the marketeers, uh, you know, get them to see the return on investment that they're actually investing on LinkedIn with. We move to the next slide, please, Mikey. More people, more time. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's not about people who work at a given company. It's about everything that influences those decisions. So it's the social aspect of it, the product experts, their friends who have just actually gone through that same purchasing process, the analyst community. And this influence starts way before your buyer is in the market. If you pick all these entities to target and identify one by one, it will not only sap your time and energy, but also your budget. So LinkedIn is the only platform uh, to build that collective confidence. And what do we mean by you know, collective confidence? Uh, it's, it's, it's moving the group of people and that buying committee, those web of relationships in that given direction. And we as a platform have invested in that understanding of that behavior and understanding of their audiences for, for many, many years now. So LinkedIn understands uh, how professionals are connected and can provide the insights and access into the complex relationships. And when these relationships are activated, in the right ways, we are actually able to build confidence within that buying ecosystem. LinkedIn is the place where all people and all key stakeholders connect in a trusted professional environment. And I think the stats that you see on this slide is a testament to the fact in terms of how uh, the conversations are increasing on LinkedIn, the interactions are increasing, not just uh, from individual one-to-one -one basis, but also on LinkedIn company pages, and also the number of queries that we have related to LinkedIn's economic graph. Uh,
So, uh, you know, LinkedIn is a place where professionals connect and we are able to provide, uh, you know, this multi, because of this multi-dimensional nature of our platform, we are able to sort of, you know, share this information about the audiences and um, what their activities and what their sort of professional journey is on the platform. And to be honest, you know, uh, people come to LinkedIn um, for their own careers, but this is, and, and then, sort of, you know, uh, connect with other professionals through events or learn about new companies and products and grow in their industry and profession. And uh, every time they return to invest in their career in an opportunity to connect and develop their relationship, that is an opportunity for us to go ahead and target and have a conversation with these audiences. They may be a prospect today, an employee tomorrow, or maybe an investor in a few years. And to help B2B marketers tap into this ecosystem, we're building a different proposition, which is calibrated specifically for B2B marketers, focusing on three key concepts, group ID, LinkedIn everywhere, and the life cycle measurement. Now, what is group ID? Uh, next slide, please, yeah. Uh, group ID is, is, is our proprietary targeting technology, but it also represents a completely different way to think about your audiences. And what we're saying here is to reach out, that thinking about reaching out to groups and not individuals. So, you know, the way the B2C industry is wired is very, very differently when you're actually trying to reach out to individuals to make a particular sale, but not a group of people to make that sale. So in the perhaps in the past, perhaps you've tried to reach out, uh, reach, uh, you know, reach out to your B2B audiences one by one, you know, looking at targeting 10 job titles or layering them with specific industries and try and reach scale at it. But with the group intelligence, what we are able to do is create this effective strategy where we are able to target the buying committee and the decision makers all together. Uh, and, and I think what sets us apart uh, as an ads platform is that we know these professional networks and their behaviors better than anyone. So this means that we are actually in the best position to connect you with these buying groups. And this is the most you know, important part of B2B marketers to look at you know the constellations and not the individuals to target um you know not not the individuals just uh, to target on the platform so what we are actually doing yeah next slide please mikey so what we are actually doing here is that we are combining our first party professional data with our ai powerful ai tool and putting it at the center of the entire campaign experience helping B2B marketers like yourself reach large buying groups wherever they are in the lengthy purchase cycle. So we're leveraging our data in new ways, valuable signals of intent, all to help you find audiences that are most likely to convert. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Mikey, who's going to talk to you about, uh, you know, winning through a LinkedIn B2B strategy. Cool. Thanks, Adishi. Uh, yeah, so now that you have a bit more information on LinkedIn and the platform, let's kind of dive into how to put together an actual strategy for your B2B business. Um, so with the arrival of AI and machine learning, there's a lot of talk about, you know, is the full funnel dead? Like, do we need to have um, a full funnel strategy? Um, but as Adishi mentioned, for B2B, it's very different. Um, and for LinkedIn, it's the funnel is very, very much alive. Why? Uh, because the B2B buying journey is very complex, um, it can take up to 17 interactions before a B2B purchase is actually complete. So you need to generate a lot of different connections and a lot of different touch points along the buyer journey. Um, and using funnel is um, the kind of right way to do that. So you know exactly where you're reaching the customer what, at what time and with what content. And LinkedIn's advertising platform is very much kind of based around the funnel. If you go into the actual platform itself, you can see it's broken out by awareness, consideration, and conversion. So whenever you're kind of coming in to create your uh, campaign, you'll kind of know exactly which objective fits where in the funnel. Uh, but LinkedIn's a little bit different. Um, you know, our, our traditional market link funnel kind of looks at it in three stages, but LinkedIn really drills into two key stages of uh, their funnel, and that's demand gen and lead gen. So what's the difference between these two things? So demand gen happens kind of earlier on in the funnel. Uh, so this is where we're introducing new users to your brand, and then we're kind of engaging with them multiple times so that they kind of warm up um, to your brand and that when they get to the lead gen stage, they're ready to convert. But why do we need demand gen? Uh, so this is actually some data from LinkedIn and 95% of your 
uh, buyers aren't actually in market for your product at any given time. So, you know, this might be for a number of reasons. Maybe the uh, business isn't ready for your product. Maybe they don't know about it. Maybe they don't know they need it. Um, or as Aditi was mentioning, maybe there's kind of people who are more junior in the company now who are kind of going to be the decision makers that aren't, you know, at the stage in their career, they're going to be making these decisions. So it's really, really important on LinkedIn to think really long term and kind of 10 steps ahead. Uh, if you're only focusing on that 5% of people who are in market at the moment, uh, you're missing out not only on conversions at the minute, but more importantly, conversions in the long term. Uh, if you're not educating your audience and building a relationship with them now, then they're not going to convert you further down the line. So for B2B marketing on LinkedIn, it's a very uh, long-term uh, strategy. And we very much need to, to live in the future and be constantly thinking um, of the next steps ahead. So in terms of lead gen then, so this happens at the bottom of the funnel when the user is actually ready to convert and is ready to generate leads. Uh, so looking at the strategy then, uh, let's kind of dive into how we would put together um, a full funnel strategy that incorporates both demand gen and lead gen. Uh, so before you do anything, it's absolutely imperative that you have your LinkedIn Insights tag um, installed on your website. If you don't have this installed, you, you won't be able to track the behavior of people visiting your website. You won't be able to optimize people to take certain actions on your website. And um, so, you know, you'll lose um, a, whole, a whole lot of data by not having it there. Um, and you also lose um, access to your website uh, insights. Um, basically, this once the insight tag is on your website and someone visits your website pages, you're able to track um, who those people are, what their job titles are, um, even what company they are. So kind of when you're coming to look at your kind of analysis of who is visiting your website uh, from LinkedIn and what behaviors are making, you're able to make really, really great decisions in terms of targeting um, and your strategy based on these findings. So it's really important to have the insight tag there so that you're able to access all of this really rich data. So now that you have your insights tag installed, let's kind of have a look at putting together an actual strategy. So when it comes to targeting on demand gen, obviously LinkedIn has a really, really powerful um, targeting tool that we want to make the absolute most out of. Um, and to kind of find out where you would start, the best place to start is your sales team, because uh, they are the people who are kind of talking to customers every day. They know who the, the most um, kind of important groups are within your audience. Um, and who like the who are the most likely to convert. So kind of by getting as much data as possible um, from your um, ex existing data from your sales team, you'll be able to start building audience personas, which you can then target in the future. And um, you can also use insights from your website tag to help guide this. So you can look at um, various kind of um, things on your website, like who's visiting it, who's not engaging. Um, and you can use that to kind of uh, pare down and um, optimize your targeting. Um, you can also then, it's really important to remember the demand gen stage to target more broadly. Um, so, you know, at the bottom of the funnel, obviously you're kind of targeting the key decision maker in your business, but they might not be the person who's, you know, making the decision. You might think they are, your sales team might tell you, but not, it's not gonna be that, that in every case. Um, and it's really important to know that um, LinkedIn has a study that showed that 6.8 people are involved in any B2B purchase decisions. So, this means that you need to not only target the key decision maker, but the entire buying community. Um, and again, this isn't just important for people who are in market now, but also really important for people who are going to be in market for your products or service in the future. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, LinkedIn has really powerful targeting and it's really accurate as well. Uh, compared to other social media platforms, LinkedIn tends to have our most up-to-date information in terms of you know what company we work for, what industry it's in, um, where we're living. Um, it also has all of our skills as well, which is really unique to LinkedIn. So like the different things that we're good at that might be relevant to target. Um, your job title, job seniority, years of experience, even where you went to, to school and uh, university. Uh, so there's a huge amount of really rich data uh, that kind of is available on all profiles of LinkedIn that we can then leverage as first party targeting on the platform. Um, in terms of kind of how we can expand and narrow our audience. So obviously in the demand gen stage, the goal is to expand our audience. And to do this, we can use the or function. So you might have your kind of core targeting persona that you've gotten from your sales team and you put kind of put together. If you want to kind of expand that, you could use the or function. So for example, say you have your kind of primary job functions that you want to target, but there might be some secondary job functions that might be interested in your business. So you could use the or function to include those in your targeting. 
or vice versa, if you're at the lead gen stage, um, or if you're kind of just refining your demand gen targeting, you can use the and function. And what this will do is kind of um, put more parameters in place so that you're filtering down your audience and making it smaller as opposed to bigger. Um, on LinkedIn as well, um, at, at the demand gen stage, we really, really want to kind of maximize our reach. Um, and we can do this by turning on uh, the reach optimization goal um, and using the maximum delivery bidding strategy. And what this does is it basically tells LinkedIn to use the budget you're giving it to reach as many people as possible. Um, and this is just a little trick that, that this um, particular optimization goal really um, increases uh, the CTR and reduces the cost of um, cost per reach as well. And um, a really important piece of information as well is that when you're putting together a demand gen campaign, it's important to have at least four to five ads in that campaign. Uh, the reason why is so that um, you have more pieces of content, so people are seeing um, different ads all the time, um, and which kind of um, maximizes your reach and frequency. And it also creates more of those touch points um, that people are going to engage with along your buying journey. In terms of ad format at the demand stage then, um, so we kind of recommend video ads are a really, really good place to start um, on LinkedIn. The reason being, like, if you're kind of only retargeting people who say been to your website or been on your page, uh, the volume can be a bit smaller there. Um, but if you're uh, using a video ad, you can kind of generate um, a big volume of people who've watched your videos for a low cost, and then you're able to remarket them. So it's a really efficient way to kind of get that funnel um, kind of in place and, up and going. Um, another thing is blog posts then. Obviously, a lot of people come to LinkedIn for information in their industry or their niche. Uh, so by producing blog posts, uh, you can kind of be, a, be seen as a thought leader on the on the on uh, your niche um, and get more people onto your website. There's also text and spotlight ads as well, which are kind of more secondary ad formats, um, but they can work well too. Uh, but the big one I want to talk about today and the one I'd like you guys to take away from this is thought leadership ads. Um, and these are a newer release uh, from LinkedIn. And basically what they are is, uh, obviously when you have your traditional ad, you'll post that ad from your own business's LinkedIn account. But what thought leadership ads do is they allow you to um, partner up with, it might be a you know an actual thought leader who is uh, maybe you've created a piece of content with or wants to promote your content, or it could even be an employee in the business. Uh, but basically what it does is it allows you to partner with that person and use your ad, so like your piece of content that would normally come from your business, and it um, promotes it through that thought leader. So it basically what it does is it creates kind of some contextual credibility and makes your ad fit in a bit more on LinkedIn. I think people are sometimes more likely to listen to something if it's coming from an actual kind of expert on the topic as opposed to a brand. And uh, so these can work really, really well. Um, Forty-nine percent of uh, business decision makers say that thought leadership influences their buying activity as well. Um, so this can be a really good way to leverage that, um, and it can be really easily integrated if you have like um, a content strategy in place. Um, you can kind of use thought leaders as a distribution channel through LinkedIn, which can work really well. So we wanted to put this to the test to see how it worked. So we had um, a case study released a few weeks ago, and um, talking about TikTok and the age of SEO show. Um, and instead of kind of promoting it from our brand, we actually took a few employees from the company um, and used them as the distribution um, for the ad. Um, and they worked really, really well. So the CPC was 58% below the account average, and both the engagement rate was much higher than the account average, and the cost per engagement was lower than the account average. So it was really, really efficient, worked really well, drove a lot more engagement. And um, so we're seeing really good success with these, and we definitely recommend that you give them a try. Um, so yeah, before we get into lead gen, um, it's really, really important to kind of consider these few questions before you get started. Um, so first of all, how does your company define a sale? So like, what does a sale actually look like to your company? Knowing where that exact endpoint is will help dictate the rest of your strategy. Um, how long is your sales cycle is really important too. So, you know, once a month comes a lead, how many touch points, how many interactions do they need to have with your sales team before they actually become a sale? What does a quality lead mean to you? So, you know, what what does that look like? Like, is it someone who kind of ticks a, a number of boxes? Is it just any lead? Kind of deciding what a quality lead looks like before you get started, again, will help you optimize towards it. Um, do you have marketing automations or CRM integration in place? This is really, really important for LinkedIn marketing. And um, obviously, when you're driving these leads, it's really important that you have something that's going to happen to that lead afterwards. 
And so by setting up the CRM automation, you're making sure that that person receives um, an email or, um, or put into an email workflow immediately after they become a lead, uh, which can increase the conversion rate. So that's really, really important. Um, what's your sales team's lead response time? So again, just knowing this is really important because you can optimize your campaign towards it. And how are your leads being nurtured? So once someone becomes a lead, what are the next steps? So like knowing all of this information before you get started will help you build your um, lead gen strategy to optimize for your the goals of your campaign. So on LinkedIn, it's very much all about account-based marketing. So obviously your traditional marketing is about reaching as many people as possible and then kind of refining in and getting people to purchase. Account-based marketing flips that. So instead of kind of going wide, you're going out targeting exactly who you know you want to reach, whether that's a company list, profile list, um, and you're getting in front of those exact users. So it's a very different kind of strategy and a very different targeting um, kind of functionality to it. Cool. So on LinkedIn, a really good way to kind of run your account-based marketing is by using company targeting. Um, and there's a really, really handy way of doing this. So basically what you can do is create, uh, start a spreadsheet and you can fill in details on all of the companies you want to reach. Um, it's recommended to have a higher volume in here. Uh, so say if you have um, a number of companies that you want to, to reach, you can put them into this uh, spreadsheet. You'll then upload that sheet into LinkedIn, wait 48 hours, and then that audience will be matched and uh, to LinkedIn. And when you start, obviously, you'll have a massive um, audience, which has all of those companies' employees attached. In order to filter that down, then you can overlay job titles, job seniority, uh, whatever your kind of um, filters are to get to the uh, key decision makers um, can be really, really useful. Um, some people in Wolfgang have been doing some really innovative things with this as well. Obviously, not every client is going to be able to supply you with, you know, a thousand companies they want to reach. And um, so there's been, we've been kind of testing out using chat GPT and different things like that to kind of help fill in a lot of the blanks, which has been working really well. So just an example of how account-based marketing, marketing worked for one of our clients. Um, so GSR. Um, are a client who work in cryptocurrency and obviously they have a very kind of niche target audience so our challenge there was to increase the volume of um, MQLs that we were driving through LinkedIn so how we did this was we uh, targeted a list of companies with the clients uh, provided to us we then filtered this list with the relevant job titles we wanted to reach um, we used a piece of SEO cr created content um, and promoted that in a document ad uh, which so I will take you through in a bit more detail later when it's a really effective ad format. Uh, so we had our document ad and our lead gen ad uh, with all of this targeting. And then as the kind of final quality control, uh, we added in a mandatory uh, field into the lead gen form where someone has to fill in their work email. And the reason why this is really important is LinkedIn has an autofill function. So if you click on a lead gen ad, it will automatically load in all of your data. But if you set up your LinkedIn account maybe a few years ago and you don't have it updated with your most recent email, um, you know, th that isn't going to come into your inbox. Or if it's um, like not your work email, obviously with B2B, we want to be reaching them in the work setting. So having their work email is really important. So by having this mandatory field in there, it's just uh, ensuring that you have the most up-to-date um, email, work email of the, that person you're targeting. So we had really, really good results with this campaign. So it had a 56% form completion rate um, and it increased the volume of MQL significantly for the client. So um, yeah, it worked really, really well. Um, so apart from obviously, you know, the company targeting, there's lots of other things we can uh, kind of retarget at the lead gen stage. Obviously you put in all this work at the demand gen stage to uh, build out all of these different audiences. So now is the time to retarget those. So that could be people who visited your website, excluding people who converted, video viewers and um, email lists. So if you have a list of cold leads that you want to now target with uh, maybe a more warm conversion or more warm lead, warm lead gen campaign, you can do that. Uh, so there's lots of different audiences that you can retarget and bring back into the bottom of the funnel at this stage. Um, in terms of how to capture them, so um, there are a few other ways um, beyond lead gen forms on LinkedIn. Uh, so for example, if you couldn't use lead gen forms for whatever reason and you needed someone to convert on the website, you could run a conversion campaign optimized for leads um, and that would kind of work that way. Um, offline conversions is basically when you like have offline conversions, like maybe retail purchases in store or email calls, you can then upload them into the LinkedIn platform and help attribute some of that uh, those sales back to LinkedIn. Um, but we recommend the kind of best uh, format to use is the lead gen form. 
Why? Because it's uh, just performs much better. Uh, lead gen forms drive five times higher conversion rates than landing pages. And it makes sense if you think if you're on LinkedIn, you'd rather just fill in your details really quickly and sign up for an ebook or a webinar or whatever it may be, as opposed to going on to the website and you know letting that load. And it, it just adds more friction. And so by using lead gen forms, it kind of reduces that friction and improves the, the kind of efficiency. Um, in terms of bidding on LinkedIn, then, so we could spend all day talking about this. So I've kind of just simplified it um, into kind of three uh, categories uh, for you to see. Uh, so maximum delivery, kind of similar to the reach optimization goal. This is where you give LinkedIn your budget and you say, just get me as many leads as possible for my budget, um, which can work well if you don't have too strict of a, a cost per lead target. Then cost cap is basically when you um, put in the maximum amount you're willing to pay for a lead. So say, I want to pay no more than 80 euro for a lead. I'll feed that data into LinkedIn and then it will optimize the campaign based on that. It won't spend if it's not going to get me there and about to my, my target uh, cost per lead. Then manual bidding is kind of for more experienced uh, social marketers. So this is where you'll basically set the bid value. So exactly how much you want to bid on a lead or a click. Um, and then you'll go in and kind of, you'll have to monitor it much more regularly than the other two, I'd say. Um, but it can work really well if you want to have much more control um, over your bidding. Just in terms of some lead gen ad formats then, so uh, there's lots of different really um, engaging ones you can use. So a contact form would be a more kind of straightforward ad, which is, um, you know, just to sign up if you're ready to kind of get in touch, uh, a phone call or whatever, maybe uh, document ads, which again, so I will talk about in a bit. Webinar, which a lot of you might have signed up through this ad. Um, again, really good way to, to kind of collect more colder leads. Um, request a demo. So if you have maybe like a, a software website and you want to offer a demo, again, this is a much more lower funnel lead gen ad type. Uh, then you have ebooks e and white papers. So this would just be a gated piece of content. Um, and then competitions. Again, this would be driving more colder leads, like if you're giving away an offering or um, something, some kind of incentive. Um, it can be a way to generate a lot of uh, more cold leads. So now that you kind of have your leads, you've set up your campaign, your targeting, what, what happens next? Uh, so once a, le a lead signs up, uh, they're seven times more likely to convert when they receive a response uh, within an hour of filling in the lead gen form. So this is why it's so important to have a marketing automation in place, because if someone signs up for a lead form and then you're kind of manually going in the next day, like that lead might have forgotten about the, the thing that they signed up for. They, they Basically, they're just becoming colder and colder the longer you leave it. So by having a CRM integration in place, that person is potentially getting their ebook or whatever they sign up for immediately after. So it immediately increases your conversion rate. So it's really important that this is set up, particularly for B2B. In terms of how to set up your integration, so there are some um, marketing platforms that uh, integrate directly with LinkedIn. So you won't even have to use kind of a, a third party. But if your CRM doesn't directly integrate with LinkedIn, it's not the kind of game over. Uh, you can use um, third party tools like Leadsbridge or Zapier, and basically they will um, connect the leads from LinkedIn to your CRM. So when someone fills in the form, they'll go straight into your CRM. Then the next step, I could do a whole other webinar about um, email automation, but it's really important then once that lead gets into your uh, CRM that you have some sort of you know nurture flow um, or steps for how you're gonna nurture that lead in place. And uh, that might be directly with your sales team or it's, it's still in marketing, depending on how uh, warm or cold that lead is. But it's just really important to consider that before you even start generating leads, what the nurture flow is going to be like for that person. So, yeah, in summary, um, here's a kind of look in, in, in the full funnel sense of what we covered. So when you're kind of bringing someone into the funnel, you could use your th something like thought leader ad to show that your brand is an authority on your topic. Then you could show them more blog posts to kind of warm them up and get them to consider. And then once they're kind of ready to convert into a lead, then you would have something like a webinar where you're converting them. And um, cool. I'm now going to pass it over to Sai, who's going to take you through our case study. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mikey. Uh, so now that you saw how to put a full funnel strategy in place, we want to show you how we use the exact same strategy for one of our clients to bring them business success. The client we will be talking about today is Fanuk. Fanuk is a factory automation company where basically they work with manufacturing companies and they try to automate their processes with their technology. They started in 1956 and they operate in little over 100 countries. 
uh, Wolfgang and Fanuk, we started working together in 2020. And the main goal for Fanuk is to generate marketing qualified leads on LinkedIn. Uh, and in terms of challenges, uh, the manufacturing industry is a very niche market. So first of all, within the niche market, we had to identify key decision makers. And once we found these key decision makers, we had to convert them into MQLs, marketing qualified leads. And then we had to build a resilient strategy that works across different markets in EMEA and doing all of this at a cost per lead of less than 120 euro. As we saw in the first part of the strategy, any good strategy starts off with demand gen, and that's exactly what we did for Fanuk. Uh, so we started off with a video views campaign. Now, why a video views campaign? For two reasons. Firstly, in terms of cost, video views campaign are cheaper than any other campaigns that is looking for a click or a conversion. So in terms of cost, when you're trying to reach a bunch of cold audience, it makes more sense. And secondly, video views campaign is your opportunity to say more with less. So basically, you're able to communicate your brand messaging, USPs, product offering. So basically, you're engaging the user a little more. So we went with video views campaign. And in terms of targeting for this video views campaign, we went with attribution-based targeting. Now, attribution-based targeting could be a few different things, company-based, seniority, job experience, et cetera. Uh, to look at the targeting in detail, this is what it looked like. First of all, throw back to your high school statistics. We use the OR function to make sure we were targeting people who either belong to certain member groups or had certain member skills. And then we use the AND function to filter out all the people who were in the senior position, like the C-suite executives, managers, directors. And now that we set up the targeting, were we reaching the right audience? We wanted more information about this and LinkedIn is a great place to find more data points because we were able to see that we were targeting 300,000 users of which we were able to see what is the function in which these 300,000 users work in. So like you can see here, more than 50% of our target audience worked in either engineering or operation. And then the 100% of the users worked in manufacturing. And then more than 25% of the users had 12 years experience and the rest of them were also highly experienced. So having all of this information in mind, we could only say one thing, we got the persona targeting spot on. We were able to target senior members of an organization in the manufacturing industry in Turkey. So now that we had the first stage, the demand gen set up to the second stage, which is lead generation. So when we first started working with Fanuk, we worked on web conversion campaigns, which is where once a user sees an ad, they click on the ad, they go to the Fanuk website, fill out a form manually, and then they're able to download an ebook. Now, there were a few drawbacks with this uh, format simply because the customer journey looked like this. Uh, it increased frustration because you're leaving a LinkedIn platform, you're going to a website, manually entering data, excessive steps. And because the user is leaving LinkedIn platform, we don't have full visibility on what's happening on Fanuk's website and because of which the attribution was very poor. And our cost per conversion was at, which is really high and we were not hitting our KPIs. So we looked at the challenges we were trying to solve. Did we reach the right user? Yes. But did we build a scalable strategy that was hitting our KPI? Not so much. So we decided to address these exact uh, pain points with our next stage of the strategy, which is lead generation on LinkedIn platform. Now, this is where an ad shows up to a user. And once someone clicks on the ad, they are prompted with a lead generation form. They fill out their details, and then someone from Fanuk will follow up with them. And another great thing about this format is that it's highly customizable, which means any question that you would ask on your web-based conversion form, the same questions you can ask on LinkedIn also. And because the entire journey happens on LinkedIn platform, we have 100% visibility and LinkedIn gets 100% attribution. And then in Jan 2023, we also started testing the new feature on LinkedIn, document ads. So in document lead generation ads, uh, 
ideally we would use an image or a video, but with document ads, you can use a document. Now this document could be an ebook, a brochure, a newsletter, a few different things. Now it's really effective in the sense that we are able to showcase a preview of the document. And then when we've built enough curiosity and the user clicks on unlock full document, they are prompted with a lead generation form and they fill in their details and then they're able to download the document on the spot. Now, everybody here gets something, right? Fanuk is getting lead of the user while the user is getting some really useful information. So, and moreover, we're also able to engage this user by communicating loads of information about Fanuk's offering. So this strategy worked really well, one, because we brought down the user journey by 50%. So that means reduced steps, higher completion rates, because the entire journey is happening on LinkedIn. We know exactly what's going on. This also means we improved costs. We look at the costs and the exact results in a couple of slides. But before that, in terms of targeting for Legion campaigns, we looked at targeting warm audience. Warm our audience could mean a few different things. Video viewers, anybody who's viewed the video views campaign up to 25%, 50%, 100%, stuff like that. And then web visitors are anybody who's visited Fanuk's website. And engagers could be anybody who's engaged with Fanuk either in the last 30 days, last 60 days, liked an image, commented, uh, clicked on an ad, stuff like that. And then we also set up lookalike audience. Now lookalike audience are a set of users who look like our other users. Now what this does is when we are setting up attribution based targeting because of all the functions we use, often there are some really high potential users that slips out of the gaps. So having lookalike audience is a great way to make sure you're even reaching out to those users. And the second stage of targeting for lead generation was custom segments. So custom segments are user groups based on personas. Now, this is a list of audience that LinkedIn shares with us. And we as an agency help our clients unlock these custom segments. So the custom segments that were most relevant to Fanuk were the three you see on the screen. And we were able to get this set up on Fanuk's account. And we were able to target all these users, which perfectly define our target audience. So this was Wolfgang's approach, right? Firstly, we looked at innovative ad formats at every stage of the funnel, and then we overlaid with really enhanced targeting. And the results speak for themselves. Uh, we looked at Q1 2022 results and compared them with Q1 2023 results and saw that year on year, the total number of leads went up by almost 300%. Our cost per lead dropped by 69%. And most importantly, our completion rate skyrocketed to 128% thanks to document ads. So in terms of next step, now that we've built a resilient strategy, we were able to mirror the same strategy across all markets in Europe. And then we also uploaded company lists. Basically, Fanuk provided us with a list of companies that could be their potential audience or potential clients. And we used this as our targeting. And then SEO social. So in Wolfgang, we are really big on integration. So we bought insights from SEO topics that had high clicks, topics that had high search volume, and use this data to inform what kind of documents we wanted to run in our document ads. And then the latest feature on LinkedIn is something we are testing, which is predictive audience. Now, predictive audience is similar to lookalike audience, but it's a level up in the sense that lookalike audience, which have the capability of converting. So this is something that LinkedIn's machine learning will predict for your particular account based on the audience insights it has. So we can use this audience for our targeting. So before we wind up the whole presentation, we want to give you some three tips which you can use within your LinkedIn ads. First one is benchmark and optimize. Now benchmark could be two things. It could be collaborative or pure benchmarking. And the other one is historical benchmarking. With collaborative, peer, or industry benchmarking, you are comparing the results you're achieving with other companies or other users that look like you. And with historical benchmarking, you're basically benchmarking your uh, performance with your historical performance. So, and also LinkedIn uh, publishes the benchmark report every June. So this could be really handy in terms of benchmarking. 
and then understand and adjust the audience insights on LinkedIn give you loads of data as to what kind of users you are reaching. So always make sure that you're looking at this data and adjusting your targeting because this data can help you inform if you're reaching the right audience or not. And lastly, forecast and fine tune. So again, LinkedIn gives you lo lo loads of data on based on your budget, based on your objective, what's the kind of users you're reaching. If you think you're not reaching the right set of audience or you're not hitting wide number of audience, it's time to like fine tune your strategy so that you're able to reach as many people as you want with the budget you have. And secondly, we also work within Wolfgang, we work on a LinkedIn forecasting calculator based on the industry you're working in and based on the ad spend you have, we are able to forecast the kind of reach you can get with your campaigns. So doing these three things could be a great way to kind of leap forward with your performance. So to very quickly summarize everything that we discussed, always remember to invest in demand gen because like Mikey said, at any given point of time, 95% of your audience are not ready to convert. So it's important that you are fueling the top of the funnel. And secondly, always prioritize on platform conversions. Firstly, because there's higher attribution. And secondly, you are sending loads of information to LinkedIn, which means LinkedIn can perform better in the future. And then leverage automation, because if someone filled the lead gen form today and you don't reach out to them the same day, there's a very high chance that they'll forget about you. And the goal is to always stay top of mind. So make sure you reach out to them on the same day uh, uh, and, and convert them into a successful client. And lastly, optimize, adjust, and fine tune, because no matter how much you're optimizing your ca campaigns, there's always scope to improve and make sure you're reaching the right audience. So always make sure that's one step you take up in your strategy. So that's it from us. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time. Uh, after this webinar, we, we are going to send you an email. This will have some really interesting reading material for you. And if you want to work with Wolfgang on your LinkedIn ads, we will also be sharing a form. Please make sure you fill the form and someone from Wolfgang will reach out to you. Thank you. Uh, we have some time for questions. Cool. So there's one here, so it's um, from Leticia. So it's how big should an audience list be to start bringing a good reach slash results on LinkedIn? Leticia, do you want to take that one? Well, uh, uh, I think the answer would be the, the longer the better. But what we recommend is to have a minimum of uh, 500 companies uh, in an ABM account, because what you're going to do is that then you once you further layer it with different targeting parameters, we need to make sure that the campaign is scalable. We have a decent amount of audience size. Apart from account-based marketing, uh, the recommendation when you're setting up any campaign, the, the targeting sweet spot is anywhere between 50,000 members to 400,000 plus members. Anything below that is considered uh, you know, a lower audience size and anything above that is, is a large audience size. Okay, hope that answers. There's a question here from... Um someone anonymous uh, so it says if someone competes and convert or converts using the lead form can we enter them into our automated mailing campaign um, and is the form leads on LinkedIn GDPR compliant uh, so yes and yes so when you someone fills in a form on LinkedIn if you have your kind of integration set up between your CRM so either that will be a direct integration or using a third-party tool that means that when someone fills in the lead form um, on LinkedIn if it's set up correctly that will go straight over into your um, CRM and then that will trigger your automated mailing campaign um, in terms of G being GDPR compliant, so there will be a tick box um, within the lead gen form to make sure that the person you know knows that they're signing up to a mailing list um, the, with the kind of privacy policy and everything enclosed. So um, any data that you would be sending over from LinkedIn, if that person has um, said yes, then it will be GDPR compliant. Uh, yeah, sorry, just one here then from Paul. He said, how much would it cost for an agency to help a company like mine do this? So it really depends. So that's kind of why we have the form. So based on like, you know, how much you're spending, what your needs are, what you uh, like, what you want your campaigns to do, uh, then it will kind of be costed that way. So it, it really kind of depends on what your business needs are. So if you want to 
fill in the form in the email, we can uh, get in touch to you about that. Uh, there's one from Tristan. When you recommend targeting through Upwardly Mobile and CEO Network, one link from CEO, can anyone use these targeting tools on LinkedIn? So these are custom segments, uh, and this is where Wolfgang as an agency can help you unlock these targeting options. So we work very closely with LinkedIn. We work very closely with Aditi. And then based on your industry, we are able to send you a list of custom segments, and you can pick out which custom segments defines your persona or audience persona best. And then LinkedIn will be able to set that up for you in the back end, and then we can use that for targeting. So there's a question from Shannon who asks you highlighted HubSpot, any other CRMs you recommend to work best with LinkedIn? So obviously like the, the best ones would ideally be the ones that direct um, and integrate directly with LinkedIn because then you don't have to pay an additional fee. Um, I know it's usually there's kind of a list that you have of those uh, ones that integrate. Yeah, so uh, there is a, I mean, now there is a big API ecosystem that LinkedIn is invested in. Some of the ones that you can actually go ahead and execute as on today are Marketo, Salesforce, Dynamics, uh, all the big ones, HubSpot. Uh, but there's, if you go on business.linkedin.com, you are actually able to go ahead and see the entire API directory. Um, I, I can send it to the folks at Wolfgang as well, and we can include it as part of the wrap up as well. Um. So there's one from John. Can you elaborate more on predictive versus lookalike audience? Uh, so like I mentioned, lookalike audience is any audience who look like a particular user that you've defined. But predictive audience is where you say, I want to look at all the people who visited my website in the last 30 days, not just in terms of their persona, but also in terms of the ac action they can take on your ad. So predictive audience in a way is a step up because machine learning is also trying to look at not just their job titles, not just their uh, seniority, but the, it is also looking at is this person capable of taking a particular action, which is web visits. So that's where predictive audience is kind of different from lookalike audience. Yeah. And if I can just add one thing to that, uh, Sai. Um, so to your question, on, I think uh, uh, exactly what Sai said, but I think another interesting point there is that lookalike audiences just exactly replicates what you seed into the campaign manager and sort of creates a lookalike of that. But predictive audiences takes an additional feature of consumer behavior who are able to take those actions that are required for conversions. So I think behavior is, is a keyword there, which, which sort of defines the difference between predictive and lookalike like audiences uh, there's a question from katie how long do you recommend running a campaign before you refresh the copy and visuals so this really depends so obviously when you're starting out any campaign you recommend to have four to five uh, options there this is just so that linkedin has multiple options to test against each other and there's kind of always kind of fresh creative there in terms of how frequently you need to change it like it kind of comes down to how big the audience you're targeting is with what budget. So when you put in your target audience in the ad platform, you'll see on the right kind of like your predicted or uh, your projected reach. So if your reach is, you know, uh, potentially 200,000 people, but you have quite a small budget, then you might not need to refresh your creative as frequently because LinkedIn's kind of tackling quite a big audience. So they might not need to refresh as often. However, on the flip side of that, if you're targeting a really narrow audience, so say you have uh, 5,000 people with a pretty big budget, then you want to be refreshing your content really frequently because your frequency for that user is going to be quite high. You're going to be showing them a lot of ads. So if you're showing them the same creative all the time, um, it, it's yeah going to be kind of a bit redundant for them. So in that case, you want to make sure you're refreshing the creative uh, pretty consistently. So it kind of comes down to your budget and your audience size. We see a lot of questions on budgeting and what kind of uh, management fees we have. So I think the best way for you guys to have this discussion is to fill out the form that we will send out later today, because that will give us a lot of idea on what kind of industry you're looking at, what kind of marketing you're looking at, and then we can track from there. There's a question from Alan. I think, DC, you might have some more info, info yeah. on. So what about directly contacting potential customers on LinkedIn via DM? How does this fit into the strategy? Yeah, so I think, Alan, uh, you know, LinkedIn has a different business line called LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And I know lots of our clients use sales and marketing alignment in that way as well. So you can either... 
uh, reach out to advertisers one on one. But I think the question there is how scalable is it? And and you know today the presentation that everything we spoke about was not just about identifying that one person who's going to make the decision. It's really influencing that entire buyer group or buying committee who's going to define and uh, onboard you as a vendor or buy your product. Um, you could reach out uh, to people directly. Um, as well, but I don't think it's a scalable strategy if you were to go ahead and, um, uh, you know, if you were to sort of build a pipeline of potential customers as we go forward in the journey. Um, Ian has a question. So do the thought leadership ads work better with an employee or someone external or are they similar results? So that's a really good question. Like we at Wolfgang haven't tested it yet using kind of different thought leaders or that I know we might have done it on some other uh, clients, but we have tested it with employees and it works really well. Like with a thought leader, I guess, if that person is, you know, an authority on that uh, topic. So if it's someone that's constantly talking about it on LinkedIn, that's obviously probably going to perform better than an employee because people know who that person is. They respect their opinion. And so, yeah, that's why getting people who are actually thought leaders and respected in that space is where you're going to see the biggest um, impact. Obviously, that's not always possible. So I think the the employee kind of distribution is a, a kind of nice alternative to it but yeah ideally you would get someone who's a really trusted source of information and use them as your thought leader uh sorry just to kind of build on that then natasha asked um do they get do thought leadership ads get better engagement how do you define a thought leader some people think they are, but are they? Um, yeah, so like a thought leader, I guess, is just someone who, you know, is having um, a kind of trusted opinion about something um, on LinkedIn. Uh, so again, yeah, like you could argue that if it's just an employee that is kind of hosting it, they might not have, you know, they might not necessarily be seen as a thought leader. But I think even just in, in terms of the context of your LinkedIn feeds, if you see a post that's coming from, you know, a person that you like click on and they have a lot of experience and posts and um, that can sometimes just feel more credible than an ad coming from a brand. So I think that's where you're kind of getting the benefit of it. It's um, that contextual credibility. Um, but yeah, obviously, if, if like, again, to the last point, it's kind of better to get someone who has a bit more um, of your reputation, I suppose, as a thought leader. But yeah, like how you would define it, I guess, is just someone who's kind of um, experienced in the field and is talking about it. They're putting out blog posts, they're having opinion pieces, uh, that kind of thing. Do you, you want to take this one? Um, so there's a question on having four to five ads per campaign. What if we have a limited budget? Can we use cuts of the same video? I think that's pretty much what many of our clients do because it, different people engage with campaigns very differently. So you would want like one longer version of the video and then shorter videos for people who engage with shorter versions, have a couple of images, just play around with the content you have. And once you have the performance uh, up and running and then you can be like, okay, this is performing well. So this is where we need to invest more. So basically this is where benchmarking all, is also very handy uh, in saying, a particular campaign or a particular ad format is doing better than the other. So we are going to invest more in that. So just trying to optimize based on what's performing well. And also yeah. if you are limited on creative, like the how we would define like an ad isn't necessarily a different creative in each one. Like you could just run different versions of the copy, uh, different versions of the headline, just some sort of alteration in each version. So it, it, in theory, it could be the same video five times, but just with different combinations of copy headlines all that stuff so it doesn't have to be, or even landing pages and um, it doesn't have to be a different you know five different videos and um, it can just be small variations it's just to give linkedin more to optimize um, cool and then there's the one from paul how long should you have your linkedin tag on your website before you see stats um Aditi, do you want to take that one yeah, I think, Paul, it depends. Uh, one, it depends on what's actually the amount of traffic on your website. Usually what we see it takes under 10 days. If there is a, if there's really good traffic coming on your website, the system, if the moment the inside tag is placed, the system actually starts to build um, that audiences, but it only starts reflecting if the, or the website visitors mapped back to the insights tag on LinkedIn is greater than 300. Uh, it's a very small number to have, but uh, the more the website visitors, the sooner you're actually be, be able to see. 
in historically what we have seen is seven to 10 days, you're actually, you can actually start seeing the results in your campaign manager. Um, yeah, I think that's all the questions. Um, thanks so much everyone for joining us. As I said, please um, keep an eye on your emails. Uh, we'd love to continue some of these discussions um, on kind of these calls to discuss us potentially working with you. And obviously we'll send over those um, important documents as well. Um, yeah, thanks so much for your time and yeah, have a great rest of your day. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Bye.